In many situations, one piece of damning information is enough to decide to completely write off an individual as bad enough. We latch on to that information, and occasionally, we allow that to be the linchpin that holds our stance on them together in its totality. We don't need to know more. This is more than enough. But what if I told you, in this situation, it got worse? What if I told you that the piece of information you were using to base your entire view of this person on was just the tip of the iceberg? What if I told you that it was not only possible for them to be worse than you thought, but it was a nail-driven fact that they were worse than you thought? Well, today I'm here to do exactly that. I'm here to talk about somebody who's become the subject of controversy, and I'm here to show you how much worse it actually gets when you go below the surface. Today, dear viewer, I'm here to tell you more about a zoo file known as Hypnotist Sappho, and I'm here to show you exactly how far this rabbit hole goes. So grab a snack, grab a drink, and grab a hold of your will to live, because you're going to want to make sure that doesn't get away from you by the end of this video. Now, Hypnotist Sappho, who we'll be referring to as Val or Valerie, since it's listed on her YouTube channel, is a VR chat YouTuber who does group hypnosis for her content. As of September 11th, she's also publicly come out as a zoophile, which if you don't know what that means, it means she's a person who's sexually attracted to animals. She argues many things in her coming out video, but I'm not really here to discuss all of that. I've already made a stream reacting to that video with a good friend and fellow YouTuber, Labrat. I'll link that below if you're interested. Now, upon seeing this video, I made the decision to leave a comment, which prompted Val to reach out to me via Telegram to insist on an interview. At first, I wanted to tell her to kick rocks. I'm not in the habit of giving zoo files a fair shake. But after some thought, I decided I'd oblige. So, before going live for my stream, the following interview was had between myself and Val. Why hello there, cutie. I saw your comment. If you'd like, I would be happy to answer questions. Love your voice, BTW. <sighs> sure, give me a few minutes. All right, I'm ready. I had questions regarding a few things that have come up. My first question is in regards to your certification. Are you licensed as a therapist and have you gone through proper education to practice? I am in college for psychology, and do plan on eventually being a licensed therapist. Hypnotherapy itself, however, does not require a license, because I am not diagnosing, curing, or prescribing things to people. I simply let people know how others have responded to my work. As for study, a lot of that comes from the Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy, which teaches Neo-Ericksonian hypnosis. I also read books, such as The Patterns of the Hypnotic Techniques of Milton H. Erickson, MD. It works quite well. It's very therapeutic and relaxing for people. All hypnosis does is allow someone to go into a deep state of focus and become more open to positive suggestions. It's not about mind control or anything of the sort. It is also important to note, I do not claim otherwise that I am somehow a licensed professional. It is something I'm working towards. I've gotten popular enough though to where I have to limit the demand. All right. I'll keep that in mind. On the subject of hypnotherapy, is it accurate to state that hypnotherapy puts the subject into a mental state where they are more open to suggestion? Generally, yes, given the subject agrees with and permits it. That's why for most work, you should have a conversation beforehand about what exactly you're going to be doing. It cannot be something that rubs against someone's moral values, because if it does, no matter what, it won't be effective. All right, that leads to my next question, which you'll probably not like it, but I need to ask regardless. Have you ever attempted or successfully used somebody being in a suggestive state to take the session to a more sexual place and or topic? Only when that was the already agreed upon subject of the hypnosis, because I do erotic stuff as well. I do not take randoms and do weird sexual hypnotic things. I do, however, have a very affectionate personality. I will go up to people in VRC and cuddle, hold, kiss, purr, and generally tease without much regard, which certain assets would call light ERP and are trying to smear me with. In some cases, it has made people uncomfortable, and in those cases, even if I disagree, I can see how they could call that harassment. That's why I've been generally turning the dial down as time goes on. For instance, the last erotic session I did was with a group of four to five people, and they had a pretty good time, and everyone knew exactly what the session was going to be about. 
All right, a follow-up question on the video you made, and this is towards the latter half. When you transitioned to the podcast format, I'm not sure if it was specified who your guest was, but if you don't mind me asking who they are on social media, I am in no way requesting personal information, I'd appreciate knowing. I'm also known as Mama Sappho. Mama, Miss, Mommy, all those things because I have a mommy voice and I'm so affectionate. When I went to the short podcast segment, it was one of my close friends I met from a zoo forum. This is a personal friend though, and not someone popular like Toggle or other zoo personalities. I know the forum you met them on. I've previously covered it in a video. They are simply a zoo, trying to live their best life. I personally spend most of my time on zoo community, which is not plagued by nearly as many fetishists, and is also why it's recommended in the description of my video. Well, I do have follow-up questions regarding your server, if you're willing to answer those. Yes, that would be fine. I allow people who are 16 and above to be in the server, but only give the ability, slash not safe for work rule, to people who can verifiably prove, with ID, they are 18 plus. My server is not sexually focused, and all explicit channels, which cannot be unlocked without that role, also explicitly state you must be 18 plus to enter. I also have a couple zoo channels on my server, which are only safe for work content. All right. I have a question regarding your moderation staff. Do mods have access to all channels by default, uh, seeing as their job requires them to, you know, regulate the server? They did, and all mods apart from the one on my server have that access. Unfortunately, that led to an oversight where a 17-year-old head moderator had access to the 18 plus section of the server, so that has since been changed, so they can't assign themselves not safe for work. I don't believe I have any further questions. Now before we continue any further, I'd like to clarify a few things. The first being that I only asked Valerie questions I already knew the answers to. I did this to see how honest she intended to be, and if she was completely honest with me, I might have considered asking questions that I, well, didn't know the answers to. And unsurprisingly, she wasn't honest, and I didn't ask those questions. So why don't we go back through that interview and deconstruct where her lies sit, and what the truth actually is. My first question is in regards to your certification. Are you licensed as a therapist, and have you gone through proper education to practice? I am in college for psychology, and do plan on eventually being a licensed therapist. Hypnotherapy itself, however, does not require a license, because I am not diagnosing, curing, or prescribing things to people. I simply let people know how others have responded to my work. As for study, a lot of that comes from the Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy, which teaches Neo-Ericksonian hypnosis. I also read books, such as The Patterns of the Hypnotic Techniques of Milton H. Erickson, MD. It works quite well. It's very therapeutic and relaxing for people. All hypnosis does is allow someone to go into a deep state of focus and become more open to positive suggestions. It's not about mind control or anything of the sort. It is also important to note, I do not claim otherwise that I am somehow a licensed professional. It is something I'm working towards. I've gotten popular enough though to where I have to limit the demand. Now, Valerie expresses that she's going to college for psychotherapy, and that hypnotherapy does not require a license. Val further explains where she has studied, where her knowledge of hypnosis comes from, and gives an explanation of what hypnosis is. To end it off, she expresses she does not claim she is a licensed professional. And there is a lot of dishonesty to unpack in there. First off, Val claims hypnotherapy does not require a license. This is not fully accurate. While it's true you don't need the same collegiate certifications to operate as a hypnotherapist as you do to be a psychotherapist, it still requires its own certification. Allow me to quote a segment from Rapid Transformation Therapy's page on how to become a certified hypnotherapist, hypnotherapy as a career. Question, do I need a degree to be a hypnotherapist? No, a degree is not needed to be a hypnotherapist if you train with a hypnotherapy school such as Rapid Transformational Therapy. You simply need to gain a valid hypnotherapy certification in order to practice. So why is this important? Because it calls into question Val's understanding of the subject she practices, and it also matters when you go into the next point, which is that she studied at the Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy. I want you to note that the operative word here is studied. She doesn't state she passed the certification exam that the online course gives. Right, I forgot to tell you that it's an online school with a subscription-based model and a free 14-day trial offer. Just want you all to know that. 
what Val's attempting to do here is a bit of linguistic sleight of hand. She answered the question I asked on the most technical level, that being about whether or not she's licensed as a therapist, but did so in a way that dodged answering whether or not she has a certification to practice hypnosis from her place of study. However, considering she previously stressed, and this is a direct quote, hypnotherapy itself does not require a license, I would be willing to bet she has no such certification to perform hypnosis. Go ahead and prove me wrong, Val. I'll wait. Now, the next thing I'll be poking at is Val's claim of, I do not claim otherwise that I am somehow a licensed professional. I have sources that say differently. Let me roll you a snippet of a conversation you had with one of them, Val. I respect your choice. I support that community. That's just how I am as a therapist. Yeah, that word, that one right there, therapist. Do you know what that word means, Val? Let me define it for you and everyone watching. Using the definition provided by Talkspace's what is a therapist, in brackets, psychotherapist, the complete definition. Therapists, or psychotherapists, are licensed mental health professionals who specialize in helping clients develop better cognitive and emotional skills, reduce symptoms of mental illness, and cope with various life challenges to improve their lives. Licensed. Val. Operative word in that definition. I, I assume you know what it takes to become a licensed therapist. Uh, you are going to college to study the subject, right? Well, let me just clue everyone else in, though. You need a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and in some cases, a doctoral degree. Uh, given you're still in college, you're not qualified as a therapist, so why the fuck are you calling yourself one, Valerie? Y you see, Valerie, these statements are completely incongruous. You can't argue, and I'm quoting you here, I do not claim otherwise that I am somehow a licensed professional, while simultaneously appointing yourself with a title that implies you are a licensed professional. Now this is far from the worst thing we'll be looking at in this video, but you needed at least this much context to understand a bit more about Valerie's character. It was important that you understand exactly how much she's willing to lie and manipulate the truth. Alright. I'll keep that in mind. On the subject of hypnotherapy, is it accurate to state that hypnotherapy puts the subject into a mental state where they are more open to suggestion? Generally, yes, given the subject agrees with and permits it. That's why for most work, you should have a conversation beforehand about what exactly you're going to be doing. It cannot be something that rubs against someone's moral values, because if it does, no matter what, it won't be effective. All right, that leads to my next question, which you'll probably not like it, but I need to ask regardless. Have you ever attempted or successfully used somebody being in a suggestive state to take the session to a more sexual place and or topic? Only when that was the already agreed upon subject of the hypnosis, because I do erotic stuff as well. I do not take randoms and do weird sexual hypnotic things. I do, however, have a very affectionate personality. I will go up to people in VRC and cuddle, hold, kiss, purr, and generally tease without much regard, which certain assets would call light ERP and are trying to smear me with. In some cases, it has made people uncomfortable, and in those cases, even if I disagree, I can see how they could call that harassment. That's why I've been generally turning the dial down as time goes on. For instance, the last erotic session I did was with a group of four to five people, and they had a pretty good time, and everyone knew exactly Exactly what the session was going to be about. Now, I'm going to approach this segment in a very broad fashion because, frankly, I could use this next bit of information that I'm going to show all of you to respond to any of these answers individually in a number of different ways. So let's just cut the bullshit, and I'm just going to give you this next bit of information by itself. Yeah, great. And afforded from Sappho. Just got done with some very pleasant trances. Did some therapy. And then, things just kinda happened. And suddenly fractioned them a few times doing erotic hypnosis. Hehehe. <laughs> Had someone writing and moaning my name as they came. And the other was trained up with a word that makes them feel deeply aroused. Like a nice filling knot is gently pressing in and out. <laughs> Alright. Fucking nasty bitch. So... I think we can agree that Val's not being totally honest when she talks about fetishists, yeah? I, I mean, fuck, she's literally using hypnosis to make people moan her name while she makes them feel like they're being fucked by animals, so, uh, that I disagree with fetishists position goes right out the fucking window, doesn't it, Val? I also sincerely doubt this was something the other party consented to, considering Valerie literally states it was unintended. I, I think there might be a case of sexual abuse in there somewhere, but, you know, I'm not a lawyer, and unlike Valerie here, I don't 
I don't LARP as things I'm not certified as on the internet, so I think we're gonna cut this part of the rebuttal short, just right there, and just leave you with that information. Come to whatever conclusions you'd like to about it. Well, I do have follow-up questions regarding your server, if you're willing to answer those. Yes, that would be fine. I allow people who are 16 above to be in the server, but only give the ability, slash not safe for work rule, to people who can verifiably prove, with ID, they are 18 plus. My server is not sexually focused, and all explicit channels, which cannot be unlocked without that role, also explicitly state you must be 18 plus to enter. I also have a couple zoo channels on my server, which are only safe for work content. All right, I have a question regarding your moderation staff. Do mods have access to all channels by default, uh, seeing as their job requires them to, you know, regulate the server? They did, and all mods apart from the one on my server have that access. Unfortunately, that led to an oversight where a 17-year-old head moderator had access to the 18-plus section of the server, so that has since been changed, so they can't assign themselves not safe for work. I don't believe I have any further questions. Valerie, that's not an oversight. That's not an oopsie or even an oopsie poopsie. You knew this person was underage. You knew they had access to chats they shouldn't, and you allowed it to persist. If you didn't know, that would be one thing, reasonable doubt and all that, but you couldn't possibly have not known a moderator had access to all chats in your server. You set the fucking permissions, Valerie. It's impossible you didn't know when you're the one who decides what permissions certain roles get. Oh, Jesus, this has been an experience, hasn't it? Well, I hope you're ready for more, because we're not even close to finished yet. Now, after the interview between me and Val, there was a small back and forth. Needless to say, it went about as well as one may expect. Let's just roll it, and I'll cut where I need to, yeah? Cool. Generally speaking, people are very much overblowing the situation over the few people I made uncomfortable. If you have specific zoo questions... I would be happy to answer as well. Also to note, my VRC avatar was ripped and leaked, and two particular groups, FTAC and Fatality, are currently on a smear slash frame campaign right now, finding close friends and other mods to corroborate with them. These people have harassed me, my server, and its members, and their credibility is not very high. These people have a vested interest in destroying me since I came out as a zoophile. Also, if you're interested, I have some inside information on the perpetrators and their misdeeds. Recordings of Hard R Dropping, the 14-15-year-old kid that is the head moderator of FTAC, and has a Twitter that interacts with many 18-plus accounts. This is pure idiocy. Like, Valerie, d did you think I was on your side here? Did you did you think I was just going to drop the subject, wrap you in a blankie, and tell you, don't worry, hun, Yodi's here for you? One, you're a zoophile. I don't make a habit of being nice to people who fetishize animal abuse. Two, you literally lied to my face in an interview you requested, and I already knew that you were lying the second we'd finished. Three, you tried several different manipulation tactics, such as lying by omission and love bombing via complimenting my voice, calling me cutie, and that god-awful art as a sign of affection. I have no empathy to offer you, Valerie. None. Not one damn bit. I mean, honest to god, have you even looked at my channel? I don't even make videos about most of that stuff, and even if I did, you are a far more important topic to me with how astronomically fucked the things you've done are. Anyway, I get that you may hate me or my views, but we can at least be amble about it. I won't rage at you or get offended if you call me a dog fucker. <laughs> I'm afraid that's not really in the cards. Your community has made continuous attempts to gaslight others by doctoring my tweets to try and convince people I'm a zoophile, which is categorically untrue. I have evidence that members of it have sent bestiality pornography to children, and even doxed them to try and scare them into shutting up. Other members of your community have threatened my friends, my significant others, plural. It's happened, uh, for several years now. And even my life and livelihood because they can't tolerate the fact I won't be quiet. So the short answer is no, I don't keep good relations with people like that. You can't possibly think most zoophiles are like that. 
because of those bad apples. I'm sorry those things happened to you. I also dislike how now people will try to doctor and frame shit to make it look way worse than it is. Or complete fabrications altogether. I don't think you're a zoophile, but even if you had some of those thoughts, I wouldn't be all public about it, like I'm scoring some social points. Just like any community, there are bad apples. Zoophilia should not be forced on anyone. Anyway, I'm not going to try to silence you or make you quiet. I think it's important to treat everyone with respect because everyone is entitled to at least some. Cancel culture is fucking cancer and trying to ruin someone's life and livelihood over opinions is messed up. You can believe I'm like that too, but I would just as much like to prove you wrong, love. But whatever, you can be disgusted with me, that's fine. I would just as happily give you love and affection, though. Do not call me love. I am not willing to be spoken to like that by a zoo file, especially with what I've seen them advocate when they think nobody is looking. I've had people send me the things they say in private telegram chats. I've seen the forums they use that they don't tell most people about. You can feed that line of, that's not what zoo files are like to whoever you want, but as far as I'm concerned, you can run it down the road. I know better. Oh wait, also, I am talking to a psychiatrist about my condition, so don't think I haven't tried helping it. I'm finished having this conversation. I think your perspective is very jaded, and I hope it changes in the future, because most are not as fucked up as it may seem. Pat pat. Well, try not to twist my words around. All right, lovely. You go about your day and have a good night. You can probably tell that I lost my cool a bit here, and it'll happen a bit more as it continues. It kind of happens when a degenerate like her has tried jacking you around and thinks you're too stupid to know she did it. Val, I'm not a real dog, so do me a solid and stop flirting with me, okay? I'm not your type, and you're not mine. And, and you also may have noticed something here, and it's something that's happened, you know, throughout the entire interview. Val has been making very obvious attempts to use pet names and flattery to persuade me to come around to her side of things. Now, pairing these few examples up with her own statements of, and again, we're quoting here, I do, however, have a very affectionate personality. I will go up to people in VRC and cuddle, hold, kiss, purr, and generally tease without much regard. And? I'm also known as Mama Sappho. Mama, Miss, Mommy, all those things because I have a mommy voice and I'm so affectionate. It really makes it look like Valerie likes to use flirtatious behavior to try and pull herself out of hot water. Let's also remember this is a woman who apparently, and I'll roll the clip again, and afforded from Sappho, just got done with some very pleasant trances, did some therapy, and then things just kind of happened, and suddenly fractioned them a few times doing erotic hypnosis. Hee hee hee. Had someone riding and moaning my name as they came, and the other was trained up with a word that makes them feel deeply aroused. Like a nice filling knot is gently pressing in and out. So I think we can see exactly how twisted things can get when this bitch gets her way. Now I think we've covered just about everything that happened before the stream, but our saga isn't quite over yet. See, Valerie saw my little show with Lab Rat, and after that she had a few words to speak. And I think it's quite eye-opening how far she'll go to try and hide the truth, and the tactics she'll use when flattery won't help her. I'm just gonna let this play out, and I'll jump in when it feels really necessary. I will preface this with one thing, the screenshots do appear different. The reason for that is these were taken from my mobile device. I archived the conversation in real time while I was having it out of my home. You'll see why it was a good thing I did soon enough. Saw your video. It was okay. I thought you were a bit emotional at parts and projecting your rage when I was just being genuine and honest. The very dramatic language was because it's a dramatic situation and I was nervous talking about it, LMAO. Why do you have to assume everything is manipulation? I get that you've been hurt, but Jesus. Also, I link Zoo Community in my description and don't recommend people to Zooville. Even though I originally saw my friend's post, 
on a public viewable thread, in my opinion, to many fetishists hang out there. Also, it's well known that zoophile in context of the zoo community refers to more than a basic Google search answer of its sexual, and suggesting otherwise is dishonest. My final point is that I talked to a psychiatrist about it, and I'm getting help. And yes, I do have mental problems, and it has impacted my life significantly, not just being a zoo. Another thing to note is that it wasn't a panic move to protect my image. In fact, I had zoo drama long before September 8th. That just happened to be the day I finally opened up about it and told people, hey, I'm going to be coming out about this, but believe what you wish. If you have other questions, that's fine. Keep in mind there are people who are actively harassing and trying to stir up more drama because the groups I pissed off are full of trolls. The accusations are almost exclusively from mods or former mods of a particular group, and are also friends with the individual who is leading that campaign to destroy my character. Keep in mind you and your sources are biased as hell against me, and your verified evidence can be very easily faked. I hope your follow-up is accurate and specifies the distinction of allegations, no hard evidence. Before we move on, I just want to point out one thing, and that's this part right here. Keep in mind you and your sources are biased as hell against me, and your verified evidence can be very easily faked. Valerie, you have no idea who my sources are and what my evidence is. Fuck's sake, woman, you never even asked what evidence I had or who was helping me, so how the fuck would you know anything about the validity of my sources or my evidence? This video is the first time I presented it publicly, so how the fuck would you have possibly known if it's valid or not? Are you clairvoyant, Valerie? Are you an X-Man? Is that is that the answer? Are you, are you Jean Grey? I mean, hell, Valerie, if you had even so much as asked, just asked, I'd have shown you my evidence. I'd have given you what I had in my back pocket to see where that went. I may not have named my source since they asked for anonymity, but for God's sakes, Valerie, don't sit there and preach about how your evidence is fake when you don't even know what I have and haven't even asked me for it. Another note, this accusation of my evidence being unreliable without asking to view it is at the tail end of an essay where Val attempted to pick apart the least important arguments in my stream. You know, such as nitpicking my tone and making semantic arguments. As you can probably tell, this is another manipulation tactic. Shocker, right? Valerie's attempting to present what feels like a cohesive rebuttal to my stream and follows it with an assertion that neither I nor my source is credible based on those things. Okay, Val, Val, just open, open your ears really quickly, okay? Nitpicking how I deliver my argument and playing the linguistic hokey pokey with me is not enough to convince me to second guess the things I've seen, heard, and read. I'm sure everyone who's listened to everything before this, as well as that stream, would probably agree that the evidence I have is reasonably solid for the assertions I'm making. Wait and see. Wait and see. Ooh, that's interesting. Is that a threat? It's a statement. Take what you want from it. I'm sure you'd love getting people to corroborate with your bent view of me. Just be accurate, at least. Always am. You haven't made mistakes? Didn't say that. Typing. Whatever. This doesn't get us anywhere. Like I said, I do see a psychiatrist. Secondly, the accusations and allegations are bunk and hold up no water, and I can easily prove the framing. I myself work in InfoSec and have knowledge about how people can do those things. Good for you. So you can believe if you want, like a cult and religion, or at least give the disclaimer of, hey, this is potentially bullshit. Yeah, I don't believe it is. And saying anything to the contrary is dishonest. Ah, yes. You don't believe it is because you want to assume the worst since I'm a zoo. No, I don't believe it is because your words helped convince me you're lying. I wonder how it feels when people frame you. 
Like, you know you're pathetically, intellectually dishonest. I wonder what you're planning to try when you realize you can't stir my sympathies with that. I am not against claiming for slander and defamation. Keep that in mind. Thanks. Good luck. We'll see how that turns out for you. Have fun. You know what? I don't think I need to comment on any of that. I trust you all are smart enough to recognize how frantic Val gets when manipulation fails. Funnily enough, though, Val recognizes that too. How do I know this? Well, she tried to delete half that conversation. Let's roll the rest of the conversation I had with her after she tried that. Yeah? Deleting this conversation is pointless. I've already archived it. LOL. K. But the act does help verify my claims of your deceptive nature. You mean your delusion? Maybe I'm not so mentally fucked up after all. We'll see. Whatever, you pathetic weasel. People know who you are and that you are not significant enough to really care about. So I'm just going to stop here. <laughs> okay. Val decided to block me after that, but if I had to guess, I'd say it's damage done. Honestly, I am very glad Valerie made the horrendous choice to have these conversations. I, I, I really am. Because if she hadn't, I'd have probably thought things started and ended with her fetish for fucking dogs. Before we leave, I want to thank Cecil McFly and Shiokami for voicing the segments. God knows I needed a hand with that, and their voices are much nicer to listen to than mine. If there's some reason any of you are subscribed to me, but not to them, go watch their videos and hit that sub button. I've got them linked in the description. I'd also like to thank Sirod for drawing my Sona's art, and I want to give a personal thank you to each of my patrons. I've kind of been slacking on thanking you all, so a big thank you to Percival CM, Marlow Knights, Riddle of Lightning, Xylon Arden, Lyo Convoy, Boyo, Anthony Ruth, Lucid Creator, Hateful Tate, Spoken Mind, and Shiloh Connor. Well, this was an experience. I need a drink. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys later.